and yeah. I mean, the way that they're the angle they're going with now is that Drew accidentally hurt him. It's like, oh, poor Drew, you know, he, he, he shouldn't be known as a guy that hurts people inside the ring because yeah. that's not a great way to be known. So, yeah. um, so professionally, it's not a great angle, and I think you know if they were to say it about backstage assault, at least we know that's scripted and part of it, and it doesn't reflect badly on Drew McIntyre. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, with you there. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was the announcement officially. Anyway, um, now after that we had Shawn Michaels. Uh, he was out. Did you see him at all, Matt? On the uh, on the desk, on the panel, as it was. Oh yeah, I saw him, and I was like, "Yep, always good to see Shawn Michaels in a hat. We don't ever want to see him with that hat on again." Yeah, in in a hat, man. He was merched up. I was like, "Blimey, he is a WWE poster boy now." Um, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, though, Matt, I think the standards dropped for me when he came out as the Kentucky Fried Chicken thing, the Colonel. Um, that was it for me. But then I'm seeing Shawn Michaels. He's got the the NXT UK stuff. He's got the hat for NXT. So I'm like, blimey, this is a, this is like Triple H's poster boy here now. So um, that was interesting. And of course, he announces Matt that uh, of course next week is the Super Bowl. Uh, in America, massive uh, event every year, of course. And um, you'll remember some time ago, this, uh, well, not from probably our most recent uh, wrestling fans in WWE, but back in the day, Matt, they used to do half time heat and um, they used to get in there right on the moment that it was half time. And if you didn't want to watch the entire, what they get, like a concert, don't they, in the middle of this freaking uh, event? basically a full concert if you don't want to watch that you could always flip over and watch wrestling and uh, it's actually a very good idea back in the day i remember they had mankind versus the rock i don't know if you remember that matt in uh, i think it was yeah, 99 i think it was and it was like an empty arena match so obviously they got to pre-tape it and nothing really got out like nobody gave the results away because you know they only had a certain amount of people in there um, but you know it was actually a really good idea now they're coming back with this this time Matt and uh, Vince seems very ruthless about it as well doesn't he against uh, Maroon 5 at the moment but um, yeah it's going to be it's going to be a three on three match I mean I don't know if this has the same sort of name power as maybe Mankind and Rock but um, certainly Matt uh, you know three on three sort of NXT guy is going to be there kind of a, a mix up what do, you, what do you think of them doing that Matt and um is that a smart move uh, again, or is this uh, another just sort of last sort of little desperate attempt here of trying to get something out of nothing? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good thing because it's a massive, massive audience, you know, to tap into. So, yeah, I think any publicity like that is good publicity. So, uh, yeah, more power to them. I hope that they do get some uh, responses from this and maybe draw in some extra fans because uh, we all know WWE could always do with some younger fans tuning in yeah uh, no doubt about that um, ok so uh, last but not least on the pre-show worth of matches we get a fatal four way match um, for the cruiserweight title of course all the 205 so uh, Buddy Murphy up against um, they had Tude Itami they had um, Kaliso and of course you know I mean this was <sighs> I've got in my notes here Matt that this was this should have for me this should have been on the main show what do you think Matt because I was really impressed with this I actually thought this was really good um, but I was just a bit gutted that they didn't get to showcase their stuff on the main show and um, I, you know we'll get into it later but I do think there was one match in that show that I did feel was a little bit out of place and this this would have been kind of somewhat perfect to get the fans back up again after sort of um, you know, after the women's Royal Rumble match, I thought, blimey, they really need to have something come on here that's going to be a bit, get the fans up and sort of re-tapped into their energy levels here. And unfortunately, uh, it resulted bad for AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan for me on the on the crowd reaction. But, um, I mean, this match was really good, Matt. And, and like I said, I don't score these, but if this was, I'm going to score this one only because it, it was that good. And I thought all the guys done a really good job um, for for doing it, I knew it, kind of what it was going to be, but I think this was a little bit better than I thought, even for a pre-show. So um, I would, if this was going on normal, this would have definitely been a, a definite uh, three and three and a half stars easily. Uh, it was that good. What did you make of the match, Matt? And uh, of course, Buddy Murphy in general. I mean, he's getting more and more of a fan base as we go along. He's had it since the Super Showdown, of course. Oh yeah, uh, I really enjoyed. 
enjoyed this. Uh, I'd probably score it even higher. I mean, I might even give it a four because yeah. uh, I feel like these guys had the right energy about them mm-hmm. and they went out there. They knew that they were dealing with time restrictions and that's the only bit that really threw me out when that little clock starts to appear at the bottom. Yeah, I don't like and that. you really into the match and then you see that there's 10 minutes left and you're like, well, there's only five minutes at most left in this match because you know that they're going to wrap things up on the pre-show and then get ready for the show. So that's, that did take me out at the moment. That's the one of the main reasons I wish this was on the main kind of pay-per-view uh, but yeah those guys definitely went out there and they did something else I don't really see that often with WWE rules that um, all four men always seem to have an active role in the match there was yeah. none of this lying around waiting yeah I think that's why I liked it this spot before you get involved I feel like all the action was there it did exactly what it said the team you know this match was going to be action packed and it was and I really enjoyed it yeah, no, I thought they'd done a really good job with this. Um, and this match, just going over 12 minutes, so it was it was given a fair amount of time, I feel, but uh, it was just a shame that they didn't get to showcase their stuff on the main show. Um, it does, for me, it does make a hell of a difference. Um, when you go back and look on these things, I mean, how many people, Matt, in years to come are going to go back on a pre-show and watch some of that? I mean, it's not going to happen. Um, you're only going to watch the main show, so uh, it's a little bit disappointing, um, in that regard but um, okay let's go into the main show now Matt and uh, I always have to mention this because I know people get upset with me uh, when I do these reviews I were like you didn't mention it uh, the setup Matt we did speak about this in the preview as well but the setup um, obviously it was very unique Matt um, I thought it was very odd when I sort of saw sort of um, you know for the first sort of match and we saw Becky Lynch and Oscar come out and and Obviously, there was nothing, you know, it was flat. It was <laughs> the screens in the background were like, you know, at, at what sort of waist level um, to most of the competitors, which I thought was very different. Um, so you, you don't, you know, we're, we're used to seeing these giant screens everywhere. And uh, of course, it wasn't. But, you know, to be honest with you, after a little while, I thought, yeah, well, I kind of like this and it's different. And like I said on the on the preview, I think that this will probably stand out more uh, served the test of time of somebody going back and remembering 2019 over a lot of the rest of them not because of what happened in the matches but purely because of the the layout and the sort of uniqueness of it what did you make of the um, the setup though Matt and uh, was you a fan of it or was you not a fan yeah I thought it was something unique it stands out it's different uh, when people look at this Royal Rumble they might not necessarily have to remember the year more as the layout of the actual arena so uh, it definitely stands out above many of the other different Royal Rumble uh, venues they've had yeah so uh, okay let's go to our first match then so we had um, Oscar uh, defending her women's championship against Becky Lynch the man um, and as we spoke in the preview I think that um, I, I I think did you who did you go for in this one Matt I know I, I called for Oscar in this but did you did, was you Oscar uh, as well Becky, I think. Oh okay. Yeah, I I kind of you know I said yesterday I was like a massive proponent of you know somebody chasing rather than catching uh, and uh, but I I got to be honest with you although I said that I do slightly want to go back on what I said just a little bit here um, when I meant that I I didn't think that meant she was gonna tap um, like kind of clean so that that surprised me out of the whole thing here because although I want somebody to chase him like Stone Cold Steve Austin did uh, I don't remember him tapping out and doing these sort of things um, is this to me it sort of signified the era that we're in with the 50-50 like we'll give you this but you'll get that later kind of thing um, and yeah sometimes when you look at the most over people in WWE they actually are staying 100% one way. They're not giving or they're not having to sort of give anything up for it. And uh, they're the most over. Um, notes I've got in this match, just from my point of view, Matt, uh, I, you know, definitely there, uh, there was a kind of a dangerous looking suplex uh, on, on the apron floor. Um, I thought, but used by Oscar uh, at the beginning. I put him in my notes, but um, you know, for the most part, I kind of enjoyed this match. I was kind of, I was. It was interesting they put these out first, Matt. These two, but um, I was quite glad they did. To be honest with you, I, I was at first when I heard Becky's music. I was like, really already? Um, but then you know, it made perfect sense, I guess, um, given what happened later. But um, yeah, it was a good match. I mean, this went well over 17 minutes so it definitely got its right 
um, amount of time. But yeah, like I said, it, it was a clean um, you know, tap out in the end. And that was probably the thing that surprised me most. What did you make of the match, Matt, and, uh, and these two? And sort of, you know, does this... You, I know we'll probably talk about Becky Lynch quite a lot. But in, in a sense, Matt, does this put give Oscar a little bit of credibility here? Because obviously going back, we felt like she won only by default, really. Um, but now she's actually got a victory over somebody who's very credible at the moment um does this help oscar going forward matt is this like sort of value gone up a little bit on her now uh yeah i think it really has Uh, i think it's the best work i've seen from oscar in a long time now or Mm -hmm. since wrestlemania at Mm -hmm. least um maybe she's finally getting back on track Mm -hmm. uh it's good to see this though because i think she was so underutilized up to this point that coming into this match a lot of people even though she went on that massive undefeated streak, with people coming into this thinking that Oscar was the underdog, that, mm-hmm. she, that she might not really stand much of a chance in fight, uh, a fight with Becky Lynch. And uh, I feel that's just some terrible booking. It's a waste of Oscar almost. So, uh, yeah, I feel like the way that they book this one is kind of like they're trying to make two big stars at the same time. Not sure whether that necessarily does translate in the long run because, as we will find out later, you know, people are going to Wrestlemania and like you said 50-50 booking do you really want someone to travel to Wrestlemania on the back of that uh, well who knows but um, yeah I feel like this was a solid match I did enjoy it and like you said that suplex did look pretty nasty I couldn't quite work out what she was trying to go for there because it didn't really turn into anything but I noticed straight away afterwards Becky was saying yes to the ref like I'm still alive yeah <laughs> yeah it felt like it didn't it um, yeah but you know like I say I, I think Overall, this was a great match. I'm going to give this um, a solid uh, three and a half here. I might just... I I was almost giving it a four, but um, three and a half for me. I mean, you know, I'm probably sounding a bit hard going here, but uh, I think this year I'm going to be a little bit more... uh, I'm going to probably be a little bit more tougher to get sort of into the five mark for me and 4.5, that type of thing. So three and a half for me. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I think... Like I say, for me, when I score these things, just for everybody to know, because we all have our different opinions, and it depends what you're looking for. But for me, I go on things like the story of it, and also the match quality, of course, um, and of course the result. But um, yeah, I liked it. Nothing wrong with it at all. I thought this was a great start, but uh, it was just a little bit weird. Um, to see a claim but really good for Oscar going forward and uh, gives her some some real credibility now as a champion which is really what she needed I mean she did not need um, you know a, a defeat here that's for sure um, in, in, in any way so that, that was good for her Matt what do you give it uh, as far as uh, the out of five Yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, next match up, we've got Mr. WrestleMania himself, uh, the new one, and uh, the wrestler of the greatest wrestler. Uh, Shane O'Mac is back. He's with The Miz, and they challenged The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, wow. Um, I This is one time, Matt, I wished I would have been wrong. I wasn't wrong. I, I, I <laughs> Something went off in my head. Uh, I said it yesterday on the preview. I said, uh, you know, my my wrestle, my WWE senses are are going wild, and I'm seeing them give the belts to them. Um, so yes, they they've gone the full hog with these two. Uh, notes I've got about the match. I, I I have to say I was a little bit taken out the fact that Shane they kind of kept him outside, and there was a lot of sort of beat down on the Miz. I kind of felt like it. I don't know if this match really should have been on the card. Like, I know it sounds like I'm probably just having a go because it's Shane, but um, it did feel a little bit out of place for me. I would have much rather have seen the Cruiserweight match right here, um, but they could have had that on later or whatever, but um, I would have swapped this over. This, for me, this was like a sort of one of those SmackDown main events that they could have had on maybe this week or the week after. This was that sort of vibe for me. I didn't... I didn't really, I don't know, I just wasn't drawn in by this. This doesn't get to me. I I am a massive fan of The Miz. I've admitted that in the last couple of years. He's grown on me. But like this with Shane McMahon, I'm worried. Um, What did you make of the match, man? 